welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another Friday faves and one particular fail that I'll get into towards the end of the video. If this is your first time joining me, I'm Michaela. I'm in my late 30s and um, I, I don't really know what to tell you that you can expect from my channel, honestly. It used to be beauty, it used to be budget beauty, then it was just chit chat about all kinds of things and I think it kind of is that, but I'm, I'm in a, a bit of a, a transitional phase, aren't we all? First and foremost, obviously, Matthew Perry, Chandler Bing, died. Devastating for all Friends fans. So I'm actually towards the end of his book this week. I started it ages ago and I started it with Lee, but his slurring he really struggled with. I've listened to Carrie Fisher books and she gets progressively worse as time goes on. Um, I think it's just a thing, you know, with like addiction and painkillers and stuff like that. It affects your speech kind of long term. Um, so I knew at some point I would go back to that. We were only like a chapter in um, and this week... I'm finishing that off. It's just, I mean, harrowing. Listen to it posthumously, harrowing. Uh, but one book that I did listen to start to end this week was Britney's book. I mentioned that last week, but I didn't, I hadn't listened to the whole thing yet. I just started it. It's incredible. Difficult to listen to. And I can see why some people may be like, mm. to me, I felt like I knew everything that there was to know about Britney. <laughs> like Britney Spears' life. Everything that was out there I had consumed. I was a, a massive, massive fan. Huge, like hugely on her side throughout everything that you read. But everything that she, like she just gives you this context from within that makes everything seem completely different. I would highly recommend that you listen to it if you're not a reader. If you are a reader, read it. Um, I'm a big fan of Audible because I can be doing other things like while I'm making candles, while I was, I painted my kitchen this weekend um, into the beginning of this week, full overhaul, painted the walls, painted the cabinets. It was a lot of work, um, but Brittany, Brittany was the beginning. Then I finished off the Thursday Murder Club, I think part four, and then I started Matthew Perry's all over again. Um, it was a lot of painting and, um, it's only about four hours long, I think, Brittany's book. So it's a, it's a quick listen slash read, but I think that even if you, like me, feel like, oh, I, I've watched everything, I've, I've seen everything, I think you'll be surprised at how much context she gives from inside and stories that she gives from inside the situation that maybe would be surprising. Um, so yeah, both of those books are completely, completely different. Tragic in their own ways, um, but I would definitely recommend. While we're on the subject of home stuff, because obviously the kitchen is getting... I'm accidentally making a Christmas kitchen. It's green. I'll, I'll give you a full, like, ta-da at some point, but it's a green kitchen and I'm realising... I'm steadily making my house like a Christmas house. Um, first of November, my tree went up. If you, you know, if ev everyone's got those friends, everyone's got that friend, the early Christmas person, and if you haven't got that friend, I'll be that friend for you. I love it. And I was thinking about this the other day, and um, Milo actually said this year, because his birthday is middle of November. So I usually try and wait until after his birthday, and then we do the tree, because um, then all the birthdays in the family are done. But he said, are we putting the tree up on the first of November? And I was like, well, uh, Lee was like, it's a bit early maybe. And we were like, no, no, no. I said, if Milo wants the train to go up on the bus, that's, who are we to stop him? Um, and Milo's reasoning was very valid. He said, because we can extend the good vibes. And I'm with him. I'm with him. So that's number one. I also saw something this year um, on Instagram that possibly is a lie, but I'm going to full heartedly like, yes, I believe this. Uh, people are happier and live longer. Uh, and happier lives when they decorate for Christmas earlier. I believe that to be true. I think that's probably true because we want to extend the good vibes. <laughs> so my tree is up and I'm steadily now decorating the rest of the house for Christmas, which is exciting. Um, but I also came to the conclusion that while I was decorating with the kids last night, because uh, I put the tree up on the first, but then we decorated the next night. Um, I love to do that with the kids. It's a nice little tradition that we have and um, we play the same kind of music, same specific songs, and we go through the, the ornaments. Do you remember when we got this one, the ones that the kids have made when they were at school, that kind of thing. It's a really nice tradition to have. Um, I was not allowed to decorate the Christmas tree with my dad. My dad, my dad's tree looks like a department store Christmas tree. It used to be a, an ongoing joke with my brother. If you moved an ornament, and it was like, you could barely see the tree for ornaments. If you moved an ornament, he would know that you'd moved that ornament. It's perfect. He spends a lot of time putting those decorations up um, and we were not allowed to be involved. And I get it. I look forward to the time 
that I'm allowed to decorate a tree and have it look exactly the way that I do. But the last two years, I've really just relinquished control. I'm not messing with the decorations afterwards. I just let the, I mean, Ella doesn't decorate the tree she likes to watch. Um, <laughs> and then she likes to come in at the end, glory seeker, and put on her decorations. But I let Milo just put the decorations where he wants and um, maybe I'll kind of guide him to fill spaces. But I think I really wanted to do that as a kid. And I wonder how much of me being all in on decorating so early is like, I always wanted to do this. You know, like when, you, when your parents don't let you do something and then as soon as you've got your own money, you're like, I'm going to do this myself. I honestly think that probably played a part. My dad also puts his tree up quite late. So it's just all rebellion, isn't it? I'm gonna do a haul at some point soon because I've bought quite a few things recently, just like little odds and sods, as they say. Um, but I wanted to mention this because I went last week to um, Meadow Hall and a couple of people, I know this is not a new thing, but a couple of people had tagged me in reels of the next beauty box thing. So I went in just to see what the deal was. 15 pounds, ooh, 15 pounds, you get a beauty box. You can get things, you can get like tissue paper and stuff to put inside it, but I was only buying it for myself. So I just kind of got the cardboard box to put stuff in. Uh, and you can pick five things for 15 pounds. The selection was great. And they gave me a couple of samples of things as well. I'm gonna show you what I got for my 15 pounds. First of all, this OPI, don't boss in over me around, full-sized OPI. Bear in mind the whole box is £15. I think this is good already. Um, I got this Nude Sticks Intense Matte and Lip, Matte Lip and Cheek Pencil, which I haven't used yet, but I was looking at Nude Sticks earlier in the year because uh, I really wanted to try something from the brand. Again, these two alone, £15 is a good deal. Um, then I got the Iconic, it's a highlighter, Highlight Pencil, um, which to be fair, okay has already broken. This is, where's the other piece of it gone? When I opened it the other day, I realized it's like, it's not quite right. It's like loose in the thing. So that's not ideal. That's not perfect. If I'd paid full price, I might've complained about that. But in theory, would have been a good deal. Um, and then I think, is this the, oh no, there's another thing. The Emma Hardy Morning Renewal Treatment Mask. I think I'm gonna get a few uses out of this. Obviously it's travel size, but I really liked this. It feels like a moisturiser, but it gives you that kind of smoothing vibe. Uh, and then the final thing was this Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit, which again is a travel size, but a decent decent amount of product um, to come within this. And then like I say, when I actually purchased it at the till, she threw in some samples as well. I just wanted to mention it because I don't think there's anything stopping you buying multiples. So you know like if you went you were like, oh these are a really good deal. Like I don't think there's anything stopping you buying five of the same thing. I couldn't see any signs that said you couldn't do that. So this would be a really, really good cost effective way of doing some stocking fillers. If you like to kind of buy sets and split them up for people or just add little bits of something, like five OPI nail polishes for fifteen pounds or five nude sticks crowns fifteen pounds, it's a good deal, you know? Um, so just something to consider and I wanted to mention it because whoop, because Christmas is coming up and I'm all about saving money on presents. Also, it might be too late for you this year, but I don't do presents with a lot of people. I don't do presents with my husband. I don't do presents with my parents, um, not my friends. I think Emma and I are going to do like an advent calendar thing this year, which is cute, but I don't do presents. I don't really do, like for certain people, I don't even do birthday presents with them. We've just been like, let's not do this anymore. I feel really strongly about Christmas ones though, because it's such an expensive time of year. And especially this year, adults exchanging presents just because they feel like they have to. And I'm not talking about those people that you're like, oh, I can't wait to buy this present. Those people who you've made a list and you have to take everyone off a list. And it's like, well, I've got to you know, boot three for two. What am I gonna buy for this person? I'm really strongly against this. Forced gift giving. For children, okay. But if you've got a large family, which thankfully I don't, um, then it can get a little bit out of control and it can be a very, very expensive time of year for everyone involved. And it's those kind of, what I would consider to be nonsense gifts. And I realise that's going to be offensive to someone. I apologise. But the boot three for two stuff, the like Soap and Glory gift sets, there's nothing wrong with them. I, I love Soap and Glory. There's nothing wrong with them. They are gift sets that are put together so that you don't have to think about what you're buying for someone. You go and you're like, oh, 10 pounds, that's perfect. 10 pounds times how many people? When you've not really 
Like, it's not an enjoyable thing that you're like, oh, I can't wait to give someone this gift. Do you know what I mean? I know, I'm going to get off my soapbox, but I just want to put it out there. You can put an end to it. You could be that person on your family who says, this year, shall we not? Or let's do Secret Santa. Or, you know, a lot of people are struggling for cash right now. It might be a year to float the idea of, do we need to do this? And I'm really only speaking to the people who don't like to do it who feel like me, that it is forced gift giving and you're just ticking people off a list. If it's something that you love to do and you spend a lot of time thinking about what to buy for each individual person, you go for it. But I'm really speaking to the people who feel like it's it's just another job, you know? That's why I prefer birthday stuff because you've got more time to think about that individual person. Um, And I'm just all for gifts throughout the year. Like you see something that you think that person might like, buy it for them. Why do we have to wait till Christmas and then be like, oh, I have to take this person off. Makeup wise, I haven't been wearing a ton of makeup, but I was looking the other day um, when we were in boots, I was looking and I was like, oh, I want kind of like a balmy lip thing. And then I realized I've got this already. This is the Bobbi Brown Extra Lip Tint. I've got it in a couple of different colours, but this is Bare Blackberry. I got it on today. It's just a really nice, sheer, it's very balmy as well. Very sheer, but a nice little bit of colour, but it's an actual lip balm. So when this like dries down and wears away, it's not going to make you feel dry in there. It's actually going to make your lips feel nice. It's a, a very nourishing product. So today I've got this on and then just to kind of give me a little bit of definition, I've got the Urban Decay Naked lip pencil just kind of around over the top of the lip balm but I'm mostly mentioning it because I want to know have any of you got anything that is a lower price point that is similar to this an actual lip balm I'm not talking about a lip tint like a sheer lip whatever an actual lip balm do you know what I'm saying it I had something from number seven that was very very similar that I completely forgot about number seven do a lip like a lip tint that is super, super similar to this. This has still got the edge, but it is super, super similar. But at this time of year, this is kind of what I'm looking for, a nourishing something. Got a little bit of color, but it's actually gonna hydrate my lips. So number seven, do a really nice one. And I'd love to hear from those of you who have tried other things that are like it. Let's come together and get some recommendations. I actually curled my hair and did my makeup hours ago. And then I ended up having to do something else. I was gonna film something and then I was like, life got in the way, as it always does. Um, The other makeup thing that I wanted to talk about that I've been reaching for a lot recently is the Fit Me. Can you even get this anymore? I've had this for a million years. Um, The Maybelline Matte and Poreless Powder. I love this so much. I'm pretty sure you can. I feel like this can only be like a year or two old. Um, It's just a really nice pressed powder that feels very, very um, finely milled. So you know like when you put certain powders on and it's like, oh, really, really cakey, really, really heavy. That's not what this is. It's the equivalent of a super fine, um, lightweight, word is, loose powder, but it's pressed. So I just feel like it's not ever too much. It's very, very fine. Um, I've been using this a lot because it's that kind of weird time of year where, what is the weather? What is the weather? It's so hot, but it's so cold. Like wearing this, just sitting at my desk in the window and it's sunny. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so warm. But when I got up this morning, I was freezing. It's really annoying. So I have to have this if I'm actually wearing makeup. I have to have this with me just to kind of touch up a little bit. I don't use a powder pad these days. I use this little thing from Real Techniques. This is my favourite. Mm-hmm. And just do kind of T-zone. But I hate this weather. I hate this weather. It's really annoying. i just be cold or be warm. This is just an annoying time where you can't dress for the day. Um, Also, every time I use one of these, it reminds me of the story my friend told me, not naming any names, uh, of when she went to use someone else's powder on a night out and she lifted up the thing to use the powder puff and it was a different kind of powder underneath. That's all I'm going to say. I have loved loved a very sheltered life. These things have never happened to me. Maybe that's like a totally normal thing and you're like, oh yeah. Because when I talk about that kind of stuff with other people, they're like, yeah, everyone I know does something like that. I'm like, no, this is craziness. I'm living in a completely different world. On the subject of jumpers being not quite right, I wanted to talk about Pretty Little Thing jumpers because I have so many of them now and I was looking at some the other day 
and um just because it's become kind of sweatshirt weather again which is my favorite just stop being so warm um pretty little thing make the best sweatshirts I don't know, like, it's the drop shoulder thing. They're so, the, like, they're oversized, but the, the collar area is not too large. I think this is a large, but this is still kind of snug to my neck. I love the way they fit. I love the colours that they do. The Ultimate Sweatshirt was always my favourite, but these, I've got a couple from them that are in this kind of collar with some kind of... Um, logo or something on them and I love them they're just my favorite fitting sweatshirt and they are always in the sale at this time of year Black Friday pretty little thing do some amazing deals I'm sure now I've mentioned them someone's going to tell me that they're like a terrible company um but it's really the only thing that I buy from them and it's around this time of year that I'm like maybe I need more sweatshirts so I'm going to tell you lastly what my fail was and it's really irritating because I thought I'd gotten away with it um recently I've had my ears pierced again which those of you who followed me for a long time may remember I didn't have my ears pierced for like 10 years and it was actually something people would ask me about frequently in videos like like it was that unusual that I never wore earrings um my ears I've had issues all kind of scar situations I've been uh very very pleased that I haven't done things you like nose piercings belly button piercings because of the issues I've had with my ears. I had them pierced like three or four times as a teenager, in my early 20s maybe, and I resulted in uh, keloid scars. Uh, I ended up with like keloid scars in the backs of my ears. In fact, I think the first one I had, it was really large on the back of my ear. You could only really see it. You couldn't see it at the front at all, but people could see it when I had my hair up. Um, I had it removed the day or two before my 16th birthday and I remember this because on my 16th birthday I had this big bandage on my ear it was one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever had done to the point where I didn't have my other ear done because I could hear sorry this is going to make some people really squeamish so I'll breeze past it but I could hear them sewing up my ear it sounded like guitar strings tightening it was horrible obviously I didn't feel it but just you can't distance yourself you can hear oh awful kind of just forgot about it um it wasn't really an issue I think I probably had my ears re-pierced again that's with a gone again uh multiple <laughs> multiple issues there uh and eventually I let them heal up um and then maybe last year end of last year I thought I really want to have them redone I want to go somewhere proper I want to have a needle I want to go somewhere where someone knows what they're doing uh, we had some drinks uh we went I had my first two done and I was ecstatic loved them they healed so much better than when I went to Claire's and had them done with a gun the whole thing was just so much easier than I expected it to be and um they just they were healing fine no issues no keloid scars nothing it can be keloid it can be hypertrophic one I think keloid scars grow over time which mine do hypertrophic is just like a larger scar like my c-section scar it's been 12 years and it's a lumpy slug of a scar I just don't scar well. This, I've got a scar here. This one here. That's from about six months ago. Um, and I I got this scar from, you know, like the, the door thing that goes into the door where, like, it's a sharp thing in the door. I don't know if you'll be able to see that through my arm hair, but it's, like, raised, you know? That shouldn't have scarred as badly as that. When I had been sedent, there's a lot of scar tissue here. It's like very soft and squidgy. It doesn't happen with some people, but I scar badly. So I was really, really happy with the situation with my ears. And then I had my third hold on, which took a lot longer to heal. It was a lot more painful. And I think it was because we're kind of getting into cartilage area. Um, I pretty much healed up. I changed my earrings out. Didn't think I had a problem. And then last week I thought, God, this one's really, really sore. It was very tender. And then one day like a few days later, I thought, I can just feel it. It was hot and throbbing. And I thought, I'm going to have to look at this. So I took the earring out and just blood gushed out. So clearly something was awry. Cleaned it all out, used some like antiseptic and stuff, swapped my earring for something different and um, was kind of really looking at my ear. And I noticed that the second one here, which you can't, you won't be able to tell because I've got some specific earrings in for it now. But the second one has a little tiny lump of a scar on the front of it 
and the third one is getting it as well. And I was like, no, I never got them on the front of my ears before. I was so annoyed. So I've bought from Amazon these like rubber discs. They're supposed to be like pressure discs. And I've bought these earrings. I think I've got them in this, these as well. So they're like disc earrings that I thought would probably help. And I've got the rubber disc and I've got the disc earring and I've like squashed it together really tightly. And I'm hoping it's supposed to cut off blood flow to the scar tissue. That sounds awful, doesn't it? But I'm hoping that will help. We'll tell, time will tell. I'll let you know. Um, if anyone's had that situation where they've actually prevented or reduced a keloid scar, let me know how that went. Uh, but that's my fail of the week. Really annoying. But as it is, you know, you get to kind of nearly 38 and I'm just, I don't care as much as when I was 16. I just don't like, I've got a scar on my ear. Meh. <laughs> I could have like a big massive lump on my ear now and I think I'd just be like, ah, it is what it is. That is another reason that I have never uh, succumbed to the Botox and stuff like that yet, because I think, what if the needle goes in and I've got like a, like I've got two scars here from when I had like IVs when I had C-sections and I've still got the scars now. Both look exactly the same. One of them is 18 years old. Um, what are the chances I might get scars at every single site of the injection? every possibility um i actually have been thinking recently about the way i want my content like the direction i want my content to go in the next kind of year um and i was talking recently about how i feel like i'm in a bit of a, a no man's land at the moment a bit of a where am i because i'm in my late 30s but how do you market yourself as late 30s when i'm over 40 i feel like i've got uh, i'm in a niche again i'm like in a this is i, I people will search specifically for, I want to find people over 40, or at least I do. Um, late 30s is kind of a bit more difficult. And when I find people who are in their late 30s, early 40s and beyond talking about stuff on YouTube, it tends to be like, how's it look younger? And it's a lot of stuff is about plastic surgery and stuff. And I think I kind of, I want to be a person who's not doing that because I want to find those people and I'm struggling. I want to find those people who are like, I'm not, I'm not trying to look younger. I mean, I can't be, I can't, I can't lie, I don't want to look old, but I'm not trying to look young. I'm not trying to be like, look 20 again. And I want to age gracefully. And I want people that I, I want to watch people who encourage me to do that and don't encourage me to, like, it's just a little bit of Botox. It's, it would be so easy to just, and I'm very, very tempted. And I want people who are going to be like, don't do that. Just don't, just wait a bit, wait a bit longer, wait a bit longer. And so as is usually the way with YouTube, and you can't find what you're looking for, you need to become that thing. So that's kind of how, that's that's where I'm at right now. The next few videos, I, I may talk a little bit more about kind of what, I, what I'm hoping for, for the, maybe for 2024. Maybe it's the end of the year thing that's like, because that, I, I feel like that's, that's where my head is at. Um, why am I waiting to turn 40 to make the content that I want to see? I don't know. I don't know. But I have already made notes about some of the stuff I want to talk about because it's just, you know, you know. Right, anyway, I'm going to go because I'm on my lunch hour uh, because I just didn't have time this morning. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!